Good morning, everyone. So I've done more than 25,000 miles now in the Polestar 2. I've done quite a lot of range tests, as you've probably seen from my channel. It's one of the things I like doing. Um, it, it fits in quite well with driving longer distances, not so much short distances. But today I'm driving, it's not far, it's only 60 miles up to London, in rainy, wet, damp conditions with a temperature of 10 degrees. So what I thought it would be good to do would be to just talk a little bit about this drive and see what kind of consumption we get and how this would fit into a daily commute for someone that needed to drive 60 miles a day or maybe do 60 there and 60 back. What kind of consumption you'd get from the car and I'll also talk a little bit about cost of charging because obviously electricity has gone up a lot and some of my older videos do relate very much to the cheaper prices we were getting two years ago. So. Let's get going. It's uh, 60 miles and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the range later on. So I've decided to stop on the way at Peace Posture Service Station. It's, in all honesty, only like 15 minutes drive from my house. But um, I knew that there were some new grid serve chargers here that I haven't yet seen. They're behind me in the background and you probably saw them in the shot as I drove into the car park here. It's really nice to see grid serve expanding their locations. This particular service station used to have just two chargers and now we've got a, a nice big bank of chargers behind us. What you can see though is that Saturday morning 10.40 is that most of them are in use. I think there's two free. So it, it comes at a good time to see these kinds of things being installed but as you've probably seen if you read a lot of stuff on the news and even follow any of the Facebook groups about electric cars there is quite a lot of negativity about the lack of rapid charges around the country. It is improving and in my personal experience I've never actually had any issues finding a charger. Uh, as you can see at the moment there are some available so if I wanted to charge I could just stop here and plug in. Okay, so we've reached our destination now in London, driven about 61 miles. And you can see from the consumption data here on the screen that it's showing 34.7 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Now, if I calculate this down here on the calculator, you can see we can do 75 kilowatt hours for the battery divided by 34.7 times 100 is 216 miles of total range. So that's a uh, that gives you an idea of how much range you'd get on a drive like this on a really wet day. So you can see from all of that driving footage, there was a lot of water on the road. Like this is probably the most that I imagine you'd get um, in the UK. Typically when you're driving on motorways during this kind of a storm, very windy conditions as well. But the wind was mainly from the west. So the route I drove kind of averaged out the wind. So I don't think that would have made much difference to the consumption because you can find that with very strong headwinds or tailwinds that can make a difference. Temperature was around 10 degrees. So that's not particularly cold. 216 miles. That's pretty consistent with what I would expect to get um, with the car, especially since they've done quite a few software updates over the last year. 
Now, I remember when I got this car quite early on, I did a drive up to GridServe in Bra Braintree, and I think the temperature is about three or four degrees with this kind of weather. And in that scenario, I think the range I got was more like 180 miles. So if you knock off six or seven degrees in this kind of weather with that heavy rain, it really does make a big difference to your consumption. And you're probably gonna get less than 200 miles. Now I do wanna emphasize that I have one of the original Polestars that was released into the country back in October, 2020. So if you've got a newer one released more recently in the last year, you might have a different battery size, different motors. So that's something to bear in mind that this is a car that was released early on and it was the only model available at the time. So 216 miles. Now, how do I feel? This is the thing I'm, I'm seeing so much talk on Facebook groups, forums about disappointment with range and the charging experience in the UK. The range for me, 216 miles, that's absolutely fine. I know that that is nowhere near what Polestar claim, or in fact, any manufacturer would claim. It is very, very rare to get anywhere near that claimed figure. The Polestar is quite a heavy car. This is something to bear in mind. And it doesn't uh, show you the efficiency that you can typically get from some of the newer cars. If you look at something like the EV6 from Kia, that's gonna be a lot more efficient and you'll get more mileage per kilowatt hour. Same with the newer VW cars and even from a Tesla because they, they don't carry as much weight. The Polestar was adapted from a platform that is heavier. So that is something to bear in mind. 216 miles though for me means that I could easily come here to London and drive back home and I would still have only used about half of my battery, maybe just over that in these kinds of conditions. During the summer, it would be an even better situation. So I could easily drive here and back and then charge again overnight to be able to do the journey again. I could drive here and back and here again and still have enough battery power remaining. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, when you're driving an electric car. If you can get 200 miles from it, I think that's pretty decent and it's it's perfectly fine to drive in that kind of situation. So if I use just that simplistic data that the car provides me with, which is the uh, number of kilowatt hours per 100 miles, I know not everybody likes that, num that measurement. Not all manufacturers give you the same thing. Many cars will give you the number of miles that you're getting per kilowatt hour. And actually that that's a better way of looking at it. Like the Kia Soul EV that we've got, that's the default on the display. So it's actually a lot easier to work out how much consumption you're getting. But if we assume that that's what we're gonna get from this, from a 75 kilowatt hour battery, if we were to use the entire thing, we would get 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, when it comes to working out the cost of driving, it all very much depends on where you charge the car. Most electric car owners know this. If you're charging at home and you're charging overnight and you have a cheaper tariff, even with the higher electric prices at the moment, some of the Octopus Energy tariffs are around 16 pence per kilowatt hour. Divide that by 2.9 and you're going to have a per mile cost of about 5.5 pence. Now, if you are charging up somewhere like the grid serve charges, I believe it was 66 pence. So divide that by 2.9 and you're looking at 22 pence per mile. That is really expensive. A lot of people bought into electric cars in order to save money. Now, my views are kind of mixed on this because I decided to get an electric car as a business car and it wasn't just to save money. It was because I was fascinated with the concept of being able to drive on renewables, um, being able to charge with solar power at home, being able to charge uh, and, and select something like Octopus Energy and use eco eco options, wind power, solar power, also drive into the ULEZ zone in London and comply with what they really want you to do, which is not emit any particulate material into the atmosphere. And that is a really important consideration. For me, it wasn't just to save money. Obviously, saving some money is really nice, but for me, there was a large environmental element to it. And I know a lot of people would dispute this because in terms of emissions, you making the batteries is not great so it takes some time to recover those actual emissions it may be the two or two and a half year point where actually it starts to become overall more beneficial in terms of co2 but you can't get out of the the fact that not emitting 
emissions into the atmosphere in cities is a very big bonus. So that's one of the reasons why I got this car. Now I seldom charge at these rapid chargers. So 22 pence is pretty expensive. I am more in that five pence per mile area where I'm charging at home at night on a cheaper tariff. If I was to look at something like a 400 horsepower petrol car, you're lucky to get 40 miles per gallon in my opinion. I mean, I've, I've had a few decent BMWs and um, they weren't 400 horsepower. I think the, the best I had was 340 or something like that. I was a diesel and I think on a long journey I could get 40 miles per gallon. But if it was shorter journeys, I was getting much closer to 30 or 35. So on that basis, if you are filling up, if you're filling up at a motorway service station, that could be £1.90 per litre maybe at a cheaper place at 150 so let, let's put let's choose one pound 60. so let's look at a situation where a car a petrol car is using 40 miles per gallon and you're choosing something that does 400 horsepower you'll be lucky to get 40 miles per gallon i think especially around town on a longer journey maybe you will but you'll also be affected by resistance on the road from the heavy rains that we've been seeing so at say one pound 60 per liter you might get a little cheaper but it'll be more like 190 if you're stopping at a motorway service station that's going to cost you about 18 pence per mile if you are if, maybe even more it could be 20 pence per mile at one pound 90 that was the service station cost uh, for fuel you're going to be looking at something like 21 pence per mile so your general driving is going to be in that 18 to 20 pence per mile now i'm driving this car on average at five pence per mile so it is important to consider how you're going to charge your car before making that judgment in terms of cost and it's also very important to compare like for like i've seen some people online comparing a polestar with I don't know, I'm not even going to suggest it, but like, I don't know, BMW 320D or something like that. Of course, the 320D is going to be fairly fuel efficient. You might get 50 miles per gallon in something like that. And if, if it is 50 miles per gallon, you're going to be looking at something like 14 pence per mile. So when you compare that with charging a Polestar on a rapid charge, yes, that diesel may be cheaper to run, but it's it's not a like-for-like -like comparison. You really have to remember that this is a high-performance car in that sense. It's it's over 400 horsepower. You've got to compare it with an equivalent car. And I still would say that for me, an electric car is a lot cheaper to run than the equivalent petrol car. So I hope this video has been useful um, just to showcase the, the range, the mileage in these kind of wet conditions and also just a little bit of a discussion on the current cost of charging electric cars. I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.